I want to bring in former Georgia congressman right now, Jack Kingston, a Trump supporter, and former Ohio congressman Dennis Kucinich, a former Democratic presidential candidate and Fox News contributor. Gentlemen, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. And Congressman Kingston, you were at the debate last night. How did it feel from your take? I think it was a great night for us. I think that Donald Trump came across as somebody as an element of change. If you want a third term of Barack Obama, you need to stick with Hillary Clinton. If you want new jobs, you want to reinvigorate the economy, uh, strong national security, Donald Trump is the candidate. And I think he came across that way. Yeah, I think, I think you make a good point because I don't feel like the night changed anybody's vote. I don't know how you feel, Robert Wolf. I know Hillary did well, obviously. Yeah. But did she move the needle in terms of changing people's vote? Well, I think that millennials will find, and I think that's who tuned in for the first debate. They probably won't look at the second and third. I think they found what the secretary said was aligned with them very much, whether it was climate change or where she was on, on uh, you know, criminal and racism, uh, gun control. I also think that, no disrespect to the congressman, he's going to be a great surrogate. <laughs> I had to be there after the Obama-Romney first debate, and there's going to be a lot of spin, but there's no question who won last night's debate. And, and I think at the end of the day, you're going to see a lot of independents uh, lean towards the secretary today. He did uh, miss some opportunities, didn't well, he? Well, he did, but I'll tell you one of the things. When you talk about millennials, you look at Sal, beyond the substance of the, the, um, the debate itself, she had that smirk of a middle school, school teacher who is mad about the kids talking in the hall in between class. It just did not come off as a likable person, and that is so important right now. Mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, I'm not sure I know what that means. It must be a Georgia thing. Well, you know, for those of us who may have been a little rebellion against authority figures, she just had that condescending smirk. And, and I think people don't like that. I know, but she she, she you, can't leave it at home. You, she can't you come were in off the spin as warm room. and fuzzy. You, you were in that, the spin room. There you, was a before and after. The spin room before. I, definitely felt like there was a lot of confidence with the Trump campaign because mm -hmm. the polls were good yesterday. But we were yeah, talking about it. Yeah. But the spin room after, okay, it wasn't really well, close. But, but, but Dennis Kucinich, Congressman Kucinich, <laughs> let me ask you because going into this debate, a lot of people said Hillary Clinton has to show warmth. She has to be warmer. Did she do that? I, you know, this, um, this attempt to <clears throat> portray the debate in terms of stereotypes uh, misses the point that I think actually Congressman Kingston picked up on and that is the undercurrent of this debate is whether you want things to continue as they are or whether you want to throw America's establishment overboard and there's no question about it that Donald Trump uh, is an anti-establishment candidate he beat the entire Republican establishment and Hillary Clinton has basically yesterday fortified her position as the candidate of the American establishment on trade, on, uh, on national security, and a number of other areas. Uh, the issue is, Congressman, the first 20 minutes of that debate, Donald Trump did what he did during, or even the first half hour, did what he did during the Republican debates. He was willing to interrupt. He was willing to go after her and challenge her. And his central message was the political class that she leads, essentially, and represents has failed the American people. And he lost his way. The deeper they got into the arguments, and, and granted, I think some of Lester Holt's questioning was completely lopsided in her favor. Whether you're talking about bringing up his tax returns, the birther issue, uh, women. We, that's a discussion yeah. for a later date. Those are all but legitimate lost, issues. Yeah. But he lost, Trump lost his way. And the last half hour of that debate was rambling and quite frankly incoherent. That the hackers in the, the United States are, it's, it could be Russia, it could be China, yeah. it could be a 400 pound man He fell man for the bed. He fell for the bait yes. once again, over and over again, he fell for the he bait. He did. I think, I think I agree with Dagan. I think the problem was, if you look at the, we, we did an analysis of the time spent on the issues, you know, he, I mean, whether or not Lester Holt, I completely agree with Dagan. I think Lester Holt's questions, the tough questions, were all directed at uh, Donald Trump. 100%. Yeah, about birtherism, about taxes, about women, as, as uh, Dagan says. But it was Donald Trump's responsibility to get the topics that he wanted to discuss, the ones that are difficult for Hillary Clinton, her emails, the Clinton Foundation. The Clinton Foundation wasn't not a word. mentioned, not, not a, a word. single word Lester in the entire debate. Immigration, and immigration was barely mentioned, no discussion immigration, of, of the Immigration, one of the issue. biggest issues. So, but that, that has to be, again, that has to be on Lester Holt, but it also has to be on Donald Trump. They are the issues, you know, that he, that he scores on and where she is on the defensive, and he never got on the, the offensive. Wall the wall right. never came up. I will tell the you. wall never came the up. Wall never came up. One hour into the debate, I tweeted out, am I wrong to be disappointed and insulted as a voter? 
I mean, no commentary on the issues? But he did talk about crime, and he raised the point in Chicago that we've had about 500 murders this year, um, 3,000 shootings this year. Um, I, I think that's a very relevant point. When, when he talks about, I want to bring change to the inner city, I want to help with security, I want to help with education, I want to help with jobs, and she has no credibility on jobs. She is basically a government bureaucrat who has spent her life in government circles and doesn't know how the private sector works. She comes right out of the bat and says, I want to raise taxes, and doesn't talk about repatriating money from overseas. I think those are very substantive issues which he brought up. Yeah. Well, not surprisingly, Coming, uh, I couldn't disagree more. But um, I think to Dagan's point at the beginning, Trump actually actually did well when they were talking about trade. But they asked him about jobs. And it's the most surprising part to me, he could not respond how he would create jobs. Three times they asked mm -hmm. him. And I think from then on he stumbled because if if someone who is supposed to be strong for the economy cannot respond how you will create jobs. Yeah. I was incredibly surprised by that. Real quick, Congressman Kucinich, you're representing one of the major uh, important swing states, Ohio. Did it move the needle in Ohio? Well, I'll tell you, the trade is a huge issue in Ohio. Uh, there's, there still is a lot of lingering resentment, not only in Ohio, but in, in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, and Wisconsin, uh, and, and Iowa, about NAFTA. And, you know, the, the, the Democratic Party totally missed the uh, uh, the boat on the issue of trade when we fail to put in workers rights human rights and environmental quality principles and trade agreements and I thought Donald Trump scored well on the trade issue last night all right we will leave it there gentlemen thank you great conversation we appreciate you weighing in Congressman Jack Kingston Congressman Dennis Kucinich we will see you soon gentlemen